for a... With a pocket knife. Oh, wow. There's cool. some, some wood if you want to take it. We can't really do anything with it. I'm good. I got enough wood at home. It smells yeah, like but sulfide, not, but... It's not deep sea wood. I don't whittle, but I do a lot of other woodworking. I'm really I, I would like to put in my... Put in a request. Yeah, I... Unfortunately, the wood is not an invertebrate, so it can't go to the museum, and it's not a rock, so it can't go to the rock repository, <laughs> so we have a, a bit of a conundrum here. Uh, well, sounds like Gabby wants it, so... Yeah. <laughs> Stop on by. Sweet. So, Steve, should we... Do you want to settle out and poke around, or head straight across? Let's keep going. Yeah. Alrighty. Nodules again. Nodules Let's, again. Is that, yeah, we might cross the nodule field. That would be surprising because I don't think we've ever had a nodule field on top of a seamount on any of our other sites. Bridge, I nah. expected it to be a bit more coarse or a bit more hard consolidated rocks here. Can we move 100 meters bearing zero, zero, 002? Correct. Thank you. Got about an hour. Is that right? Now we have about an hour, or do we need more time to set up? Uh, no, we have an hour because it uh, bottom time was four p.m. So okay, one hour six minutes. All right, let's uh, let's zoom out and make a plan. Maybe after fourteen, let's decide where we want to go. So let's see, 14 is 260 meters away. So that's 46, 47 minutes away at 0 0.3 knots. Okay. Looks like there's maybe a, some little like high rocky bits off to your right. I can okay. see the top of the yeah, Argus totally. as well. So that might be like a little you know, pile, a little tall pile of rocks or something. On it. Let's go get it. Yeah, so, I mean, you can tell here that the currents are favorable for biology. It's just the substrate is not, in this case. Good nodules are not I'll follow you over to there. large Sounds colonies good. of things. I do have that north move on, so if I if we see something more over to the east, we can stop, settle out, poke around. Okay, um, sounds good. Or we can get back on our north track. Yeah, maybe. Uh, what are yeah, your thoughts, that, Steve? That's a, that that sounds like a better idea. Just follow the hard uh, targets in the sonar. Okay. Ooh, dandelion siphonophore. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and let the ship come to a stop then, and then okay. we can settle out and. Kind of go from there because we'll have quite sure. a bit of wiggle room there. Yep. Bridge, Nev. All stop, please. Really want to see this guy. But now the current's coming from a different direction. I got to figure it out. Okay, go for zoom. Oh, yes. Oh, whoa. I love that. You said dandelion siphonophore? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh. No. You don't want to oh, be here, buddy. It's going away. Off on an adventure. Yeah. Retract the landing gear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. That's exactly what he did. Okay. They do have propulsion uh, abilities. Not, not great, but they do have them. Okay. So you came to a stop with the ship? Yep. Okay. Might take a second. You see, he was going 0.3 knots, but okay. He'll settle out. So you got a sparsely branching summit or other? Go for zoom.
I think we were calling this um, heteropathies or trisopathies. We sampled this on the last cruise. Okay. Go white? I don't know if we ever got a good definition of that. I think it was heteropathies, possibly Pacifica. Now we have also got an umbellopathies here. This is one we haven't seen very often, but it's uh, expected at these depths. Steve, I don't know if you mentioned it already, but did you get to look at those unidentified animals on the dead stick? The things that you said you'd seen a green Go for version zoom? of? Oh, yeah, no, those, um, those we, we just collected those on the first dive. I oh, yeah, that was this dive, yeah. Yeah, on uh, earlier. <laughs> It's okay. It's a common common yeah. mistake. <laughs> it's hard to keep track of time here. Bellopathies. Go no, I, I am very curious about that um, because they look morphologically identical, but the color is different. You might just have to kind yeah, of skirt, skirt around to your left and then... Yeah, I'm getting a little stretched out for what we're going to have. You could probably stay on there a little bit. You'll just have to come around this way. Does this go up for much more? Mm, not really, I think. Cause I don't see it in the Argus sonar. So, And I'm uh, about 14 meters above Herc. Yeah. So it's Still, probably... Just, it's definitely... Yeah, it's, it's there. It's a mound, yeah. And you can There's see it goes on a little shadow. bit more in the Herc sonar. It's probably going to be the best chance we're going to see it having um, larger stuff. I, you know, I can see some bamboo corals up on top of this little donut. Yeah. It's we could we could take a little step towards it if yeah. you want to explore yeah. around it. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds great. Um, kind, of, kind of a nodule moat. That was pretty much due east, correct? Seems like it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Bridge, nav. Go for zoom. Can we move 20 meters bearing 090 at 0 0.2 knots? Yes, uh, 20 meters, two zero meters. Thank you. Just a little bit stretched out for that one. Go for Zoom. This one looks like a bamboo or a bubblegum coral. Oh, there's one of those chitons again. Those are so cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just love to see them in white. Go wide.
Go for Zoom. Yeah, some sponge rubble. This one is sea very, stars. very well covered with, um, I think what, uh, I think they're arborescent for Minifera. is a protist that kind of form these hairy like structures on the rock or on the sponge. Go ahead. Bamboo coral that's pretty well denuded. Could be uh, a prey item of that sea star that was in there. Still pretty stretched out. I guess is just just beginning the move over to the east. But will let us look at all this stuff. So Steve, earlier you I said we don't a little bit. often, um, or we wouldn't expect to see these kind of like nodule fields at the summit of a peak. Why would that be? Um, it's not that I don't think you would not expect them, but you know you would probably figure you know, the top of a volcano probably has more. I think this was the probably original. more current scoured mm, because okay. of, of these two. Yeah, you're right. So we'll whatever kind of reason, move south uh, you know, currents sure. might cir circling around the seamount, but kind of that, that there's so many nodules is actually really interesting. Um, you know, nodules also need current to form. You know, they need something to keep infecting the it's sediment okay, away there was from stuff building to look up. At north of it too. So it's not wholly unexpected, but okay. given what we had seen in all the other seamounts, with the amount of hard substrate that was available in the volcanic material, if you look at it. In your, was if you face kind of it, expected to be mm -hmm. more hard. Mm -hmm. But you know, we, we're just looking right. at the surface too. There might be, you know, a very thin veneer of sediment, mm -hmm. and then more hard rock underneath. Gotcha. And I'm yeah. Yeah. That's something we could look at, though. Um, Go for zoom. I suppose by. Uh, Looking at some of the sub bottom data that's been collected, if we run a line over the top of the seamount. Is that a oh, yeah. mushroom coral? No. Small cup coral, too, to the right. And maybe a little shrimpy? One of the nodule inhabitants. Uh, it kind of suggests that these nodules you know, may support some of these small, smaller, lighter uh, animals with a lower center of mass. What's next to that? Oh, yeah, shrimp. Oh, my gosh, yeah. <laughs> Good spot. Tiny little guy. Okay. Okay, go wide. Um, you know, nodules could be... You know, one of the things that is considered uh, when we talk about uh, processes like deep sea mining could be, you know, if you have a particularly large guillot or something or you know, flat topped summit of a seamount and it's covered with nodules, that could be a potential mining target because it's easier to work on a flat top seamount mm -hmm. than the slopes of a steep seamount. Right. So yeah, getting good. information, you know, a lot of the times the guillots aren't, are, are really are uh, yeah. covered with that. sediment, but they're not always covered with nodules, uh, which is something you really won't be able to tell and understand until you physically get eyes on the seafloor. Hmm. So the summit here is, is large, but it's not, I don't think it would be classified as a guillot. I think it's still pretty much a, a sharp peaked seamount, gotcha. possibly with numerous cones.
Can we get a tilt up a bit? Yeah. Roger. Thanks. Thank you, video. I think this might be it. I mean, if, if there's nothing else in any, in any other direction, this might be the top of it. Are you saying we bagged the peak? <laughs> We've done it. <laughs> okay, applause in the, the control right. van. Let's go home. <laughs> Can you pull out some <laughs> celebration emoji on the telestrator or something? <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, yeah, but I mean, there is a really substantial diversity here just on this small little knoll. Uh, this, uh, I think, this might be a might be a jay clade bamboo coral. Uh, this Acanella here species is another type of bamboo coral. Okay. Bathypathies there. Got some wow. Oh yeah, bathypathies and the the sponge that begins with a V that I can rem never remember the name of. Victor Gorgio? No, the uh, the one that's just like this tall pillar that's really fuzzy. Here, with the that lasers. One? Yeah, this, I, this I sponge. Was, yeah. I was thinking that was a dead sponge. Uh, huh. I feel like I've seen them in there a lot, like when they're alive, and they look dead. They they look dead, but they've got. I think they're alive I, when I they look I, like that. I think I know what you're talking about. Maybe it's a different one that I'm thinking of. There is a, a V sponge. Go for zoom, just like a little in, so I can get closer. Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, uh, what else is in here? At there's least a couple species of Chrysogorgia. There's yep. something, what's to the right of the, uh, precious coral? Zoom in? This, yeah, that's the Chrysogorgia. Oh, okay. Yep. There's also a good-sized Metallogorgia, or, uh, Iridogorgia colony on top. Looks like there's been some sea stars passing through here, because some of these bamboos are stripped of all the polyps oh yeah oh is that like that wiry thing back there is that just a uh no i was there there was oh, a colony here. further down yeah there's one in action yeah wow it looks like it just sort of landed there halfway up and then just started chowing i don't know that would be interesting if uh if that was a can we Look closer at that. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's eating it. But, Go zoom. Uh, oh. Full zoom. I, I'm not sure what's going on there. Why it's all closed up. Thanks. The assumption has always been that the brittle stars are not eating the corals that they're oh, on. Oh right. But, uh, that it's other I, other sea stars eat corals, but not those. Yeah, the the brittle stars. Uh, oh, there's a grenadier. I don't know if anyone's really taken the time to sit and look um, at some of these brittle stars. Most of the time we see their arms hanging off the colony in the flow, suggesting that they're picking off things from the plankton. Um, so that maybe they're not using the coral. It's not really advantageous for them to kill their coral, because uh, eventually that coral will fall down. Uh, yeah, sure. That's great. Just starting to head to the southeast, it looks like. Yeah. I did really want to look at this one. Go for zoom.
Yeah, so this is um looks like an old sponge stock, but it's very heavily fouled with a lot of different things like hydroids and um foraminifera, these arborescent foraminifera are all these kind of hairy projections. We sampled some uh, a while back on a previous sponge piece we got. So this this sea star looks to be responsible for this predation. Mm. This is actually really neat because uh, this must be a really old sponge for having this coral establish on it and, and start growing on it. Have, start growing and then have time to die too. Yeah. Multiple generations. But you can see that these brittle stars, the Ophiocanthids, uh, right here, these are the ones with the spiny arm tips. They don't really care if the coral is present or not. Uh, they can get by without the coral. But you don't often see uh, these other brittle stars, like the one in the background here, which is, um, I think it's a uh, Styroschema or, or something in that family. Um, you don't see those on dead colonies very much. So there's some there's something that they prefer about certain colonies or certain conditions of the colony. Okay, go wide. Awesome, going that is for neat, it. Need to see though. I think uh, I'm also assuming that's a sponge, but it, uh, you know, it could be something else. It has the sh more of the shape of a sponge, uh, the base and hold fast there, but. Could be something else. Okay, Steve, what do you we have we have leash, like Josh said. What do you want to look at? Yeah, let's uh scan around kind of in the direction that you're going around this thing counterclockwise. Slowly panning across. So I don't think we're gonna see any diversity like this out in the nodule field, so I might as well spend a few minutes here. Oh, there's yeah, some stoloniferans on the rock there too. Those are an octocoral. Uh, they typically don't produce the, these three-dimensional structures, skeletons. Uh, they usually run along the rock in patches. Bathy pathies. That's where you put your zoom coins right there in that slot. <laughs> <laughs> we found it. The zoom coin bank. <laughs> Some more ripples here. Yeah, ripples. Nice. Some of our scientists um, on the previous expedition were very interested in ripples because they could be evidence um, of uh, internal wave activity on Impinging on seamounts. Go for zoom. On the little guy to the right of the oh, cup coral. The little feller. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can we look at that a little bit more closely? Yeah. Go on. The, uh, the shape of it actually is interesting to me, and I Go may want to think about a slurp sample for that cup coral. It's more cylindrical, and the pedestal is is quite thick, and broad. Um, could we do a collection on that, a slurp? Okay. I think it's probably attached to the rock. It's not going to come off super easily, uh, but maybe just a, a brief tap of the nozzle might get it to dislodge. Okay. Sounds good. We'll give it a go. Josh, this one's you if you want it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can you just pan over to the right? I just want to see how tucked in the arm is those rocks. Pretty tucked. Pretty tucked. Oh yeah, it's pretty tucked. Good and tucked right in there. Let's see. Um, I can. It'll be a step up if I go more to port, but I can probably do it. I think you're drifting a little bit too, maybe. Okay. I'll take a look.
Um, oh, maybe not. Auto head and sure. vertical is about all I can do here, I think. Everybody makes looking, grabbing those uh, hockey pucks with these gangly grippers look so easy. I really struggle. It is not. It takes a lot of, it's challenging to work in that little corner. Yeah. But I very much like go for the, the tube whenever I can muster. Okay. Go for zoom a little bit there. He, um, uh, he got a, are you going to flush in which jar or are you going for I, here? Yeah, I've already flushed. Okay. Uh, we have jars three through seven open. Okie dokie. Oh. Oh my goodness. Okay. Lobster. Yeah, it latched on. Okay. Okay. That should be what we want. Okay, let me know when you want suction. Oh yeah, you can start it up. Arm is right in the rock. Uh, you want me to look at it at your uh, uh, wrist? I think, I think it's all right. Okay. We're flowing. Oh, yeah. We're flowing. Yep. We're at 60. There, there goes. you go. Yeah, he's him. going. Heavier, maybe. Seems to be taking a while to get there. I turned it down a bit to sure in case I was going to damage him, but I can start turning it up. It's pretty solid. You can probably crank it. Give it the beans. Okay, beans. <laughs> Full beans. Coming right up. Full beans. Every bean we've got, our best beans. <laughs> <laughs> This is sample one, two, four. One, two, three was the Niskin. I'm actually, am I seeing less jam now? Yeah, the jam seems to be subsiding. Well, if if it's in the tube, I I don't think it'll float out. Maybe just stop it and then try again. See if it's like swirling. Maybe we missed it. Sometimes they swirl at the top of the jar. Was that my imagination? Did the jam sort of go out of the suction there? I don't know. Uh, should I give it one more go? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Stuck. Yeah, let me see how to stop it. 
I'm want, wondering. I'm just I was gonna shift the jar. Pin yeah, I was gonna there. say it looked like it popped just because it was so hot. It looked like it popped a little beyond where it should have. Here, I'll try again. Stuff coming out of there. All right. Well, oh, I mean, we'll, we'll keep working on it. Yeah. I, I'm not too worried about it compared to like one of the floaty ones. I think uh, okay. it'll be pretty easy to get something gravel sized out of the slurp jar, slurp hose later. Okay. Moving on. Yes, I am. Okay, I think what we were doing is we were moving around this outcrop here counterclockwise. Yep. Yeah, just briefly sort of scanning. Tucked in there. There don't really seem to be any hugely different organisms that are, are on this rock compared to what we saw maybe 100 meters deeper. Um, the stoloniferans were probably added here, but um, you know, it's hard to recognize those. A couple of the Chrysogorgia bottle brushes look to be new to this summer. There's a solitary hydroid. Oh, Take where? a look at that. Just to the right oh, of the Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. Gelatinous. A pair of them, actually. Go for zoom. I really like these. Yeah. They almost seem connected. Yeah, it's tough to say. Um, you know, we, we think they're solitary, but, uh, maybe they have some reproductive mode we don't, we're not familiar with. There's, There's another one. Those is Where is that? Tucked in the cave back there. Oh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Oh, in the background there, so this, this little colony right there. Yeah. That's a juvenile, well, air quotes, juvenile, metallogorgia. Okay. Younger. They have these kind of, um, it's a good way to describe it. They have these periodic branches along their axis, and then as it gets older, the younger branches fall off until you get just get that tuft of polyps up top. Huh. And if you look, there are some small skeletal wounds where those old branches used to be. This is quite the scene. Yeah, this is yeah. a great Eridogorgia here. Yeah, that Eridogorgia is like a monster. Yeah. Eridogorgia bella, that colony, tightly spiraled. Cuskiel. Cue the National Geographic theme music. <laughs> It's always great when you get like fish, coral, sponge, invertebrates all in the same shot. Yeah. It's like cover of a magazine right there. Well, look at this Eridogorgia too. Oh. That's a long one. Go for Zoom video. See if I can just like pan up both the two of them. Yep. 
Yeah, you can see the, the tissue is covering almost all the way to the base on both of those, uh, which would indicate that they're probably pretty healthy. Um, there are some organisms that do like to nibble at the base of some of these, uh, like aplicophorins, uh, small little worm-like things that like to eat the tissue and polyps. Um, Very curious. Usually you don't find them on top of each other like this. It's kind of unusual that they just ended up like this. Um, sometimes corals, if they're too close to each other, they can fight um, and, and send out kind of defensive uh, tentacles that help you know, deter nearby corals from invading its space. Oh, wow. It's pretty wild. I it's think the Eritogorgia is other? winning. Yeah. Ah. It's it's really Sting battle. it's it's well documented in the shallow waters, but it's not usually observed to have corals on top of corals, uh, especially uh, of the different species here, uh, because typically things tend to be more spread out. Mm -hmm. Good grief! A very cool Great. shot. It's gone. There you can see go. the small amphipods and things nice shot. in and around the colony. Thanks. Yeah, that was beautiful. Wow. <laughs> Ooh. That, one, that one actually might be, uh, <laughs> that's a tough call. It, that one actually might be Magnus Borellis. Um, the coils are a little bit more wide. Okay. That one. So Lots you might have both species here, Magnus Borellis and Bella. Like fireworks. Yeah. Seriously. There's so many of these large like white tree looking things here i'll go zoom on this guy there's zero current here that's surprising yeah go for zoom I was thinking that these were all dead. Oh yeah, these polyps are retracted, contracted. So let's see, this is a internodal branching colony. You can go in closer if you want. I think this one would classify as barrel shaped polyps. Internodal branching, what would that be? Uh, my computer's downstairs. I have a cheat sheet to all the clades. And unfortunately, I haven't memorized it yet, so apologies. <laughs> apologies. <laughs> if you haven't just been giving us all the information. Apologies. <laughs> on the deep sea corals. Letting you all down right now. Great shot. You can turn the lasers off uh, at any time, by the way, if okay. you need to get beauty shots. Yeah. Should have said that earlier. Yeah, happy to do that anytime anybody wants. Okay, very cool. Where to next? All right, um, how much further does this go down? This uh, like knoll. Is it kind of a linear feature or is it a round feature? It's seems kind of roundy. There's a like, you look in Herc sonar. There's a little bit of a higher peak just off to our left, maybe. Oh, uh, we haven't we haven't gotten can, it can yet. Can you move due south like twenty meters? If there's still a peak on the sonar to get to, we will get well, to there. Yeah, there's just a touch of it. Well. I think there's, I bet you there's other one. I bet you there's other mounds like this in the area yeah. because if you look at the Argus sonar, you can see sort of to the to the right and behind a little bit, there's other yeah, taller so features, right? Yeah, so you think uh, 
kind of towards the northeast is where it, I don't know how yeah. you're oriented right now. Yeah, that's right. Northeast. So I'd, I'd say it's like, this is probably the topish of this, maybe a little bit higher. And then if you, um, then if you, yeah, if you look in uh, to the northeast, like you said, I think there's probably across the other side of that nodule field. I bet you there's another mound like this. Yeah. Okay. We'll like take a, a look here and then we'll do a, a quick, guess anyway. quick shoot over there. Definitely larger bamboo corals here. I was thinking about checking out that very much biggest one. Over to the right? Yeah. Yeah. This one right here in the foreground, I just want to note uh, that the nodes are so heavily overcalcified oh. that you can, oh, yeah. can't even see them anymore. Kind of looks like skeletal finger joints. It totally does. Why might that happen? Um, well, they, they overcalcify uh, over time naturally. Uh, it does, I think it does probably, I, I don't know if it actually affects the rigidity, rigidity or flexibility of the colony. Um, Go for zoom. But you can see, you know, what a what a node would typically look like is probably you know higher up, but the ones that have lumps and bumps around them, like these, are uh, completely overcalcified, and uh, yeah, th no tissue. So there, you'll notice that some of these look really fine and twiggy, like that one right there, um, and and this one here even. Uh, those have probably started to dissolve uh, in water, and the one the the parts of the skeleton of the coral that are protected by the tissue are more resistant uh, to that process. Okay, go wide. I'm a little too stretched out for that really big one. Um, did you guys say you actually wanted to go to the northeast? Yeah, I, it sounds like there's some more of these mountains off to the northeast, so okay. we can set a yeah, ship you move up. Stop that move then, Kate. So I'd be interested if you were if you went to the other side of Argus and we flip around, I'd be curious to see what you saw in your sonar. Okay, I'll do that. I'll head that straight up side. Away. Yeah, and see what happens. And then we'll just see what we see in the sonar and then we'll pick our move from there. That was a very cool spot. Great fly. have about 20 okay. minutes, 25 minutes left on the bottom. So we'll do what we can. If it's close enough, we can shoot over there. And then I guess that'll, that'll be the end of the dive um, on the bottom. But I feel like we've hit biological explosion. It's pretty yeah. good. Yep. D did you want more? <laughs> no, no, I like this. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I like, yeah, it's pretty good. It's tough to make that call sometimes because, you know, you see things over time, like what we saw on the last cruise with the Hemicorellium garden, which was just jaw-dropping, mm -hmm. uh, the density and just the crazy amounts of black corals and Hemicorellium at Tamana Seamount Southeast Ridge, um, that it kind of changes your extremometer. You get oh, spoiled. You, you get spoiled. <laughs> you can just say it. <laughs> But this is a beautiful community. Definitely high density, high diversity. If I had another Niskin, I would take one here. But I don't know. Can, could you fit more Niskins on the vehicle if you had to? Um. Yeah, I think if we had to, I think you could go to some smaller volumes, and then you could fit more yeah. bottles. Can't, there's no like roof rack skin sampler. <laughs> 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 well, I'm sure if we had, I mean, we can do whatever given enough time to figure it out. Um, yeah. I guess one option is going to something like a super sampler. Yep. That you have multiple yeah. bags you could fill. That's right. Yeah, we've done that. Uh, um, Julie Huber, right? Isn't that, I think, the right scientist? I think she's got that super sampler set up that we've put on her before. We actually take the starboard drawer right out, and it fits in there. Yep. 
then we can take all kinds of lots of water. Is this a C pen down here? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That while we're so, transiting. Let's see. So if you're facing. I'm gonna come down a bit too. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm not seeing any big shadows on the, yeah. on the meso. Go for zoom. I'll come down a bit and I'll see if I can see the top of anything with Argus. Oh yeah, really nice. That's a great shot. Yeah. This is a C pen. Uh, probably in the family Penatulidae, maybe in the genus Penatula. Um, characteristic kind of sea pen looking shape. Uh, there might be a small hermit crab at the base too. Oh, a teeny little one. Yeah, and then there's also some... Um, oh, it's a little coral. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a hermit crab on uh, what? underneath a uh, sp um, anemone or something. Oh, wow. What? Tiny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's uh, really this is, uh, cute. You can see that the sea pen here has its peduncle probably well into the sediment, uh, using it to anchor. It's really beautiful. Maybe another five, six inches or so. Okay, so go wide. What do you see? If I were to guess, I would say... I see something at uh, almost like 080 off of Herc's bearing. Yep. It's pretty small, I but it's, it's tall. <coughs> probably just going to be like a one one big one rock. One rock, yeah. yeah. That's about all I see right probably now. Probably not as big of a cluster as what we were just on, but it'd be some other, uh, probably another rock. That's 10, 20, 30 meters away. Yep. Yep. At, on, your, on your heading. At, yeah. At zero, five, zero or something. I will need to make a little move. Yeah. To Let's reach it. Go for it. I'll do 15 meters. 20 meters? Sure, 20. Let's cover some ground since we're here. Yes. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything terribly tall Bridge. in Argus. So pretty much at the top. Can we please move 20 meters bearing 0, 050? Zero. You can see the shadow in here too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I haven't awesome. made Thank this you. sonar a habit yet, but I need it's a, to. It's Dan's, good, actually. Dan's super, super happy with I, it. I'm pretty stoked with it, too. It's. Uh, I just have never really looked there. This is a new one this year, correct? Yeah. 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 yeah it's a dual frequency, uh, 6,000 meter rated. What's the other frequency it scans at? Uh, it does 650, and what is the other one? 800. Uh, 325. Okay. Yeah, and 650. Oh, not there, Kate. Oh, uh, I see. This one here. Oh, that one. We do have a dual frequency yeah. up there, well, too. Oh. Actually, the Herx one is a, it's a range. You can oh, right. dial in the frequency from, uh, like, I want to say 500 to, like, 1100 or something. Oh, wow. And you can tune it. It's, like, tunable. So it's not the big steps. You can just fine-tune it to whatever frequency oh, no you want. Oh, no kidding. That's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Go for zoom. More of these sea pens. Oh, neat. I've also um, did notice um, some very small, uh, like very newly settled Victor Gorgia. Oh, there, there's some to the lower left there. Newly settled Victor Gorgia colonies, you know, maybe less oh. than 10 centimeters or less wow. throughout the nodule That's field. Wow, so teeny. Yeah, there are some that are like three or four polyps large, so... I wonder if they're going to be disappointed when they grow up and realize <laughs> where they landed. Bad, bad decision. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's it's this okay. spiky thing? Can you go a little wider, video? Wh who among us haven't there. made bad decisions in our I youth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've lived places I've regretted. Go for Zoom, but I've been able to move. What is, is oh, that an urchin? urchin? Yeah, that's a um, spidodiadematid urchin. Oh. It's a um, deep that's sea long spine sea urchin. Pretty cool. Yep, and the Syrianthid tube anemone. Okay. Oh, cool. Uh, you, you, know. may be, you may be 
be able to run out there. You might be able to just kind of see it if you run out. To the okay. Your tether, maybe. 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 Might be able to do the flip around, give you a bit more. Yeah, and yeah, and come down a bit, and yeah, yeah I think we can see. I think it's just one rock. <laughs> one rock. We still got the big, the big rocks. Yeah, off that, well, that one cluster was very cool. This is kind of what I would expect, like a geot summit to look like, uh, you know, in an area of high crust uh, and current. Um, sea pens, you know, we we didn't see any of these sea pens over the course of the entire dive, but once you reach uh, a certain depth, they there kind of is. pop There's out. The rock. I'll let my heading go and I'll okay, flip around. Good. Oh. There's the rock. Yeah. It's, it's got good stuff on it. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can see it already. It's a good rock. Oh, yeah. It is. A good rock. Nice find. Yep. Nice ripples, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ripples, oh, those are really nodules. nice. This is a spongier rock. The last rock didn't have a lot of sponges. Yeah. Look at that dead one. Not sure. I think that's, yeah, I think it's a dead. Um, Brussels sprout. Arrayed. Yeah, Brussels sprout. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just need to stop trying to sell my made up taxonomy. <laughs> I like it. Thanks. I feel like I know the sponge every time I see it. Yeah. Well, it's almost Brussels sprout season, right? It's a winter. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a really good point. I love Brussels sprouts and I love root vegetables. I'm very much looking forward to those when I get home. I think Argus is now looking at that other pile of rocks we were just on before because I flipped around the other way. Oh, yeah. Go for Zoom. Little guy that looks like he's. Oh, it's hard to. The Victor Gorgia there? Uh, no, go Sorry. wide. I'm just, uh, just trying at the to... end. Yeah. <sighs> Let's see here. I can't really. I can come down a little more. I got I'm about 15 meter altitude. Yeah, very sedimenty. Just off can't. To the I can't do it with seamount. a low gain. Is all. Oh, that is really neat. That was a cool spot. There, I can see in the Argus butt camp. Okay, perfect. <laughs> it's probably not what you normally like to see. I think it looks great. But special circumstances, you know. Actually, pretty cool on Argus as well. Yeah, that is a good yeah. Argus view. Teaser for the next dive. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think we found what we were looking for. Yeah, we did get a rock, yeah, a little bit earlier. Yep. Yep. Yeah. We're actually properly set up for recovery too. <laughs> this is all. We're just we all did this working on, through. We yeah. did this on purpose. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. This is exactly what we wanted to do. Go for zoom. Oh, this is a great rock. Yeah, this is a really good. I did not even expect it to be this good. What with all I know about deep sea rocks. <laughs> <laughs> so what is uh, that there? Higher densities, for sure. Um, larger things. Can you go also. wide, please? Larger colonies, larger sponges. I just um, needed to reorient. Yeah, there, there was a couple of new things in the in the more so in the off to the port side there. There was a bunch of sediment and there's a sea pens that we didn't. Yeah, that was different from the other sites. Go for zoom. Oh, that's neat. The polyps are bending up or down. Uh, so th this is the live part of the colony down here. And then you've got oh, really? Yeah, uh, there's live at the base, and then all of this looks to be dead up here. There's a little bit live here. 
can turn the lasers off. Thanks. Yeah, I think these are going to start jumping soon. <laughs> so the, the jumpers. <laughs> okay, go wide. And there are your nodules back there. Um, I should set up so that I can recover from here. Wraps wise. That's going to be counterclockwise. Do you need time to set up? Um, no. Pretty really. close. I just need to sort out my brain, basically, on how I want to do it. And that's about it. Do we see any forking in these uh, ripples? Oh, yeah. Let me look. Or bifurcating, as they say. What was the bifurcating indicating? I'd be able to flip around. Here. That indicated that the waves went both directions. There's definitely okay. there's definitely some room in the tether. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna come around to port. Oh yeah, there, there might, might be some evidence of that. It looks like this it. one kind of bifurcates that way. Different kind of sea pen, different species of sea pen too in the ripples. Oh, neat. Okay, I'm getting a little carried away with my pirouetting. Stand by. Stand by. Yeah, you got to come around the port. Yeah. As well. <coughs> sure do. Um, are we going to leave it to the next watch to get in position, or are we going to do that and then come off bottom? How's that going to work? We can set them up. Yeah, either way. I mean, we can run out the clock or whatever you want to do. Pretty easy to, we're, we're pretty easy to get into recovery position here. Okay. I, don't, I don't see anything else I'd want to sample here right now. It yeah, looks like from the sonar, it's just like a bunch of these scattered rocks and around. Yeah. The nodule field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Single rocks with corals on them. Anyway, you have enough. Uh to get back here and look at those? I think so. That might be the, so there's like these just mounds all over the place. I think that might be one of the ones we just visited. Yeah. Go for zoom. Is that what you were looking yeah. for? Yeah, I thought there were something. Have uh, we not seen that before? What is that? That's, um. That is a Walteria. That's the sponge I was trying to remember the name mm. of. Yeah. It's w. It's Walteria, not Volteria. Yeah, Walteria. Like. Okay. Go a little wider. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Walteria. Okay. Walteria. Okay. That one's it. Yeah. Try the zoom again. Yeah. We're we're all set. It's a very thin Walteria, though. Uh, that's the. First one I've seen, I think, on the watch. Have is anyone ever seen others? Because I, I think uh, I'm okay, not used to them wide. being so thin. Good to know. 